Good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for dropping by and having a cup of coffee with Jesus. It's good to see you this morning. The Rev here, good Ethiopian coffee. A little cooler outside in Oklahoma. It's nice, nice, nice. Oh, that's good coffee, good coffee. Hey, this morning, we're talking about uh, discipline, the discipline of our of our mind, discipline of our body. Uh, discipline is important. Discipline is where lots of stuff comes from. Even in uh, in uh, martial arts, when they ask, they say, "Well, what discipline is it?" Even in even in uh, philosophy, they say, "What discipline do you do?" Is because they know that there is an area where you have studied out, where you've exercised out. Right? It's a discipline. We need to discipline ourselves in godliness. That's right, godliness. It's not easy. It's not easy doing what the Word of God says. But it says right here, I don't want to say, it's not always easy doing what the Word of God says. <laughs> because we get our flesh in the way. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, starting with uh, this verse 7 and 8. But have nothing to do with worldly fables fit only for old women. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. For bodily discipline is only of little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things since it holds promise for this present life and also the life to come. It's exercising our godliness, the things that we know are right. Just like Matthew uh, 18, 15, if somebody offends me and I... I can't hold the offense against them. I'm to go to them. That's what the word of God says. I'm to go to them privately and work it out with them. And if I can't, then I get somebody else involved. The church is really bad about this. The church wants to go tell. That's what the world does. That's what he said. That's fables of old women where you will go in there and you will gather your rally, your troops all around you to get people on your side. And it's always a picking and choosing of sides rather than just being focused on godliness and doing the right things. Matthew 18, 15 is, not the, is one of the not easy things to do because if they have offended me, guess what? I'm a little upset and I have to go to the one that upsets me and I have to work it out with them. That's what we're supposed to do. I'm not supposed to run to my pastor. I'm not supposed to run to my friend. I'm not supposed to run to my wife. I'm supposed to go and work it out. And it says you gain something out of that. You'll gain a friend. You'll, you're going to win somebody over. I had a discussion yesterday with somebody and we went walked through a time and it's like, I remember when we had that time, we had to have a meeting, have a discussion, total misunderstanding. And you know what? I feel like I have a friend now. I have a better friend than I had before we had a little a little strife, a little struggle. But that's where the ironing sharpens iron is. That's the working on the godliness. I can work out in the gym all day long. Yeah, it helps my muscles, helps my physical man. But guess what? It does nothing for my godliness. Well, maybe a little. But you know, because being in a physical good shape helps because then your body's in a good shape and it helps your mental state be in a good Body, mind, spirit. That's what Oral Roberts said all the time. Body, mind, spirit. But Paul is talking here and he's saying that he says, but don't be caught up in the fables of old women, worldly fables of how you're supposed to work stuff out. He says, go to the word and present yourself with a discipline of godliness. And your discipline of godliness is doing what the word of God says, not what you think it says, but truly what the word of God says. You know, most of the word of God is in gray shaded areas. It's pretty black and white. It's not left to interpretation on how you view it needs to be done. It's not left up to you to make judgments against people, whether they can handle it or not handle it. Just do the word of God. Because he says, in doing these things, it is... <laughs> It holds promise for this present life and for the life to come. So what you're exercising here in your discipline on earth has benefit now and to come. That's the part I didn't realize when I read this again last night. And I read it again this morning. This present life and also the life to come. That means that there is an afterlife and where you're in eternity. And I believe that this is some of the stuff that we do now will make an impact in eternity. And I think that there is stuff that carries over. 
your pettiness about offense and getting your re troops rallied around you, that didn't go into heaven. That's burned up like sticks and twigs. It's only the things that you did in the name of Jesus comes out on the other side. That's right. Because I'm telling you, bodily discipline doesn't have the same benefit as exercising godliness. And in exercising godliness, we do what the word of God says. Like Matthew 18, 15. Somebody offends you, you go to them and you work it out with them. You get nobody else involved. It even says, no, no matter what translation you go to, in privately, one-on-one, -on -one, how it talks about it tells you how you're supposed to do it. You got to go do it. Because if you're not doing the word of God the way God says to do it, and you put your own spin and twist on it, you're caught up in worldly old fables, not even fit for old women. <laughs> I love that. But have nothing to do with worldly fables fit only for old women. I don't know why he put that in there. But just do the right thing. Practice your godliness in Jesus' name. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for a cup of coffee. I love you guys. I love you guys because Jesus loved me with everything and paid it all at the cross. And guess what? Because Jesus loves me, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Have a great day. Amen.